Do you want to know the best path to passing the CISSP quickly? Well, stick around because in this video, I'm going to give you the best technical path to passing the CISSP. But first, if this is the first time that we're meeting, welcome to my channel. My name is John Good, and here I get to spread my passion for cybersecurity training, tips and tricks, and career advice to help you go further. Remember to smash the thumbs up to like this video and hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss future content and make sure to leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. If you like my training and you want more, check out my website at johngood.com to get access to training courses without distracting interruptions or advertisements. Make sure that you sign up for my newsletter using the link in the description to get a free copy of my ebook on cybersecurity careers. You can also join me on the Discord server. The link is in the description. All right, let's get into the video. Ah, uh, yes, the CISSP certification. It's one of those cybersecurity certifications that everybody wants, but for most people, for some reason, it's very difficult to prepare for and to achieve. We know the CISP as the gold standard certification because it covers every aspect of cybersecurity. Since you're joining me for this video, I'm guessing that you want to pass the exam and do it as quickly and as efficiently as possible, while hopefully still building up some of those technical skills. Well, friends, you've come to the right place. First of all, if you haven't seen my video on how I pass the CISP in two weeks, you need to check it out because I definitely have some good insight on passing the CISSP quickly and efficiently. Now, why does everybody want to pass the CISSP exam? Well, first of all, by passing the CISSP, you start to move your career into that next level because you're showing the knowledge that you've gained from over at least four years of experience in the industry. One of the key requirements to getting certified is that ISC squared the certification body, they actually have to go out and validate your experience. This means that you can't be fresh out of college and actually get CISSP certified because you don't have the experience. And this actually creates some value because that shows you've been battle tested. With that being said, that means that when you're first starting out, you actually need to begin to lay that foundation of knowledge so that you can successfully pass the exam when you get to that point. Preparing for the CISSP happens when you start in security, not at the four year mark when you start studying. If you look at one of the CISSP study guides, they are huge. We're talking about over a thousand pages of material. This can be very difficult if all the material is brand new to you. With that being said, I'm going to give you the best technical path for you to follow and make it much easier in preparing and passing the exam. I'll leave links to resources for each certification so that as you work through the list, you'll actually have study materials to help you as you pick up these certifications. All right, let's begin. So this path assumes that you do one section per year. That's it. If you can do that, you'll be in a phenomenal position by the time it's CISSP studying time. Now, section one is aimed at gaining basic security knowledge that's equivalent of somebody with either no security experience up to about a year or so. CompTIA's Security Plus is one option for this section. Security Plus is a vendor neutral certification that's going to give you broad exposure to different areas and it will focus heavily on concepts that are going to serve you for the rest of your career. All right, so this is the Security Plus website from CompTIA. And as you can see, there's a few different exam codes up here and we'll go over that in a second. But this is one of the really well-known security certifications that's out there. A lot of people use this as their first cybersecurity certification. So it's very popular for a lot of different jobs. And as we scroll down here, you can see the different types of things that you learn. So threats, attacks, vulnerabilities, a little bit about tools, architecture and design, cryptography and PKI, risk management, identity and access management. Now with CompTIA, CompTIA is a vendor neutral certification body. So you're not gonna focus a lot on something like Cisco, let's say but they're gonna give you a lot of the concepts so you really get ready for it. And then if we scroll down here, you can see some of the job roles that have this. So network administrator, system administrator, security administrator, and so on. With the Security Plus certification, it is one of those certifications that you need to get if you're gonna work for the US government or the military. And if we scroll down here a little bit further, you can see the two different exam codes. So currently there's two different versions that are out there. We have the SY0501, that is the older version. It was released in 2017. So there's a lot of study material out there. I've actually created a course for that version as well. Then you have the 601. Now this is not released yet. 
that's actually going to launch in November of 2020. Now for 501, you have until July 2021 to take the exam. If you actually are watching this before that point and you've started to study, it's a good idea to start going for that exam. If you're getting a little bit closer to that cutoff, you might consider going for the 601 version. The only thing is when it first launches, it sometimes takes a while for there to be study materials that get released. Definitely try to go for the 501 for as long as you can. And then eventually you're just going to have to bite the bullet and go for 601. But maximum 90 questions, you get multiple choice questions and performance based. So like drag and drop and those type of questions and 349 for the price. The second option for section one is ISC squared's SSCP. Now the SSCP is made by the same people who produce the CISSP. So that can actually be beneficial for you for a few different reasons. But the big two are that you learn how ISC squared does their questions and you'll learn a large portion of information that actually overlaps with the CISSP material. The SSCP is less known than the Security Plus for a beginner certification, but the material is very solid. This is the website for the SSCP, so the System Security Certified Practitioner. And again, it's made by ISC Squared, same people that make the CISSP exam. And if we scroll down here a little bit, you can see some of the different job titles. Now, the thing that sets the SSCP apart from the Security Plus is that with the SSCP, there is an experience requirement to actually get certified. You can take the exam at any time, but you need to actually get that experience requirement and they'll have to validate it. So if you come to the website, go down to the bottom here, you can see the different steps. So we go to register and prepare for the exam. These are the different domains that exist for it. Fairly similar to the Security Plus domains. And then if we go to the get certified section here, as far as the experience requirement I was talking about, you have to have at least one year of experience in at least one of the domains. And so you can come here and read a little bit more about it. And like a lot of certifications, there is an annual maintenance fee that you have to pay too. That's kind of just something to keep in mind. But here, if you pass and you don't have the experience, you become an associate of ISC squared. And so you can see the fee rate down here is $50 for associates per year. For section one, remember that you don't have to take both of these. There's a lot of overlapping material between the two and passing one of these is sufficient. Two is almost overkill, honestly. Now that you have some experience under your belt, we can actually start diving into some more of the technical aspects. In this section, you're going to learn more skills that are going to be directly applicable to the type of job that you probably have. CompTIA's CYSA Plus is a fairly new option, but it builds on that Security Plus knowledge give you the skills that you need to break into a security operations job. All right, so this is the CYSA Plus from CompTIA. And so it's the Cybersecurity Analyst Certification. And again, it's from CompTIA. So very similar to the Security Plus as far as just the overall experience. It is a step up certification from the Security Plus and honestly from the SSCP as well. It's going to be a little bit more technical because it's trying to prepare you to become an analyst. But if we scroll down here, it gives you the domains again. So now you're starting to learn about incident response in some of these more security operations type of roles and responsibilities. Keep scrolling down and different jobs. So threat intelligence analyst, application security analyst, compliance analyst, incident response or handler. And then if we scroll down here, so just like on the security plus, there's two different exam versions. Now on this one, the 001, this came out in 2017. And you can see down here that the English version is going to expire in October of 2020. And you also have the 002 version. And so usually exam versions last about three years. At the time of this video, you're cutting it pretty close if you want to try to go for the 001 version. So I probably would start looking at the 002 version unless you're really, really close. The other option for section two is Cisco's Cyber Ops Associate Certification. Now Cisco is a major player in the networking space. And within the last few years, they've started to expand and actually add cybersecurity operations certifications. Now this is the Cisco Certified Cyber Ops Associate webpage. And again, this is a relatively new certification as well, but it's really focused at that analyst or that security operations staff member. So if we go ahead and scroll down here, you can start learning a little bit about what it teaches you. Network intrusion analysis, host-based analysis, security monitoring, 
So very security operation centric. Now, if you want to see the training for it, you go down here to where the exam is listed right here, this recommended training. And you can do an in-person class or the e-learning training. So this is the e-learning training. It's $800. It may or may not be out of reach. But again, in my opinion, if you can actually get the official training, this is probably worthwhile. If you can't, then the CYSA plus should be more than sufficient. Remember, you're going for a certification to try to get you a tier one job. So kind of that entry level security operations job. There's also a professional level cyber ops certification that builds on top of that associate level certification. At the time of this recording, the professional exam isn't going to be available to take until November 17th, 2020. I hope that you're enjoying the content in this video so far. If you are, make sure to hit that thumbs up to like this video. And if you think of any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Also remember that this training and full courses can be found on my website at johngood.com without distracting interruptions or advertisements. All right, let's get back to the content. Section three is like a reward section for most people because you get to hack now. Since we're heavily focused on passing the CISSP exam, you don't have to be an expert at hacking. And frankly, the information that is going to be covered in the CISSP exam over hacking is fairly small. But with that being said, everybody loves to learn how to hack. So it's kind of a nice change of pace. Now the CEH from EC Council is the first option. That's the Certified Ethical Hacker. Although there's been a lot of debate over the last few years as far as the CEH's value, the fact of the matter is that from a CISSP perspective, you learn what you need to from the CEH. Honestly, for most people, it's going to be sufficient because a lot of people aren't going to go into penetration testing jobs and they just want to know, you know, a little bit about hacking and find out kind of the general information about what's going on in our networks. Cost-wise, the CEH is one of the more expensive options in this section, but let's check out the website. Now, this is the website for the Certified Ethical Hacker. So this has changed a little bit over the last few years. And one of the things that, you know, is kind of interesting with the Certified Ethical Hacker certification is that they do have kind of a caveat or restriction where if you don't have two years of experience then you can't actually sit for the exam unless you actually take an official training. So just be aware of that when you're looking at this. And the training can be kind of expensive. But if we scroll all the way down here, you can actually go down here and you can look at the different options. This exam is a four hour exam, 125 multiple choice questions. Now you will see here that they have added a practical component that you could take. So you can just get the certified ethical hacker and that's only a multiple choice test, or you can do the practical version as well and then actually get this master certification. CompTIA's Pen Test Plus is the second option to achieve a similar result. Now with the Pen Test Plus, it's a pretty new exam, but since you've already taken a few CompTIA certifications probably by now, you'll feel pretty comfortable in the environment. This is the Pen Test Plus certification from CompTIA, and this is actually a really new certification as well. So we'll scroll down here and give me a lot of the same kind of information across a lot of these. But again, this is for a hacking or ethical hacking certification. You're gonna learn about attacks and exploits, information gathering, all those kind of things that you would need to be a penetration tester. Now keep in mind, this certification isn't necessarily gonna prepare you directly for that route, but it will start to give you some of that information. And you can see that this launched in 2018, so fairly recently, and there's no other version because that's the first version that came out. The third option is the ECPPT from eLearn Security. Now this certification is probably going to be a little bit more challenging than the others, but the nice thing is that there's quite a bit of labs that you can do to practice, and the final exam is actually a practical exam. So you actually get hands-on by doing an actual penetration test for the exam. If you haven't seen my video I did reviewing the EJPT, which is the junior version, you should definitely check that out. I'm a huge fan of practical certifications, and honestly, in your career, you're gonna face a lot more of them. This is the ECPPT from eLearn Security, and again, this is an ethical hacking certification. This is actually a pretty interesting one. eLearn Security is kind of catching up right now. They really haven't been that well known, but they're starting to gain some popularity among the different areas of security. And so you can scroll down here, you'll see a lot of similar type of stuff. So finding vulnerabilities in web applications, pivoting, 
bunch of good training opportunities. Now, the reason why I haven't included the OSCP, the Offensive Security Certified Professional, is because, well, when we're focusing on the CISSP preparation, the OSCP is fun and it's got a great lab environment, but it's going to frustrate you more than anything because it's pretty challenging. Remember, we're going for the best path to get you CISSP certified and give you some technical skills. With that being said, if you actually want to look at the OSCP, I would highly encourage that you do the ECPPT first and then go for the OSCP. So you have some of those gaps filled in that the OSCP might create if you don't do that first. Section four is where we really start getting close to the CISSP. The CASP from CompTIA is really the only option here. The CASP is basically meant for those technical lead staff members, but the great thing is that you start to get more exposure to CISP concepts because they're all mixed in and that can serve as a great step going into the CISSP. All right, and this is the CASP Plus from CompTIA as well. Again, this is a really good certification when you get pretty close to getting the CISSP exam. Let's scroll down here. And if you compare the domains of the CAS Plus versus the CISSP, you're going to see a lot of overlap just as far as like risk management and just kind of being that lead person as opposed to the extremely technical entry level analyst or something like that. And if we scroll down here, you can see Security Architect has this certification. And we scroll down here a little bit further. There's been a few different versions over the years, but this current version was released in 2018. So there's a lot of study material out there. You don't get a score. You only get a pass fail. So that's kind of interesting. And similar to the Security Plus, multiple choice and performance-based question. Congratulations. You're now ready to attack the CISSP exam. Given the wealth of knowledge that you've acquired over this path, you not only have those technical skills to qualify you for a lot of jobs out there, but you also have very solid foundation for most areas in the CISSP. If you follow the path that I've laid out for you, you really shouldn't have that many gaps to fill in in order to get ready for the CISSP exam. Of course, there's going to be gaps probably like physical security or maybe secure software development that you really haven't had exposure to and you need to study them from scratch, but you're going to be very well versed in most of the areas. When it comes to the CISSP, I've made a lot of videos and training about it so definitely make sure that you check those out. And here's the CISSP certification website. I definitely encourage you to check this out just so you know what the requirements are. Basically, some of the high level stuff is you have to have at least four years of experience to actually get certified, even if you pass the exam and they will validate your experience. So don't think you can just take the exam and you know just say you have the experience and they'll give you the certification. They're going to contact your employer or somebody that is vouching for you. But again, this certification is meant for almost that manager level or lead level. So it's going to cover a lot of different aspects of cybersecurity. Question of the day, which of these certifications that we went over do you already have? Let me know down in the comments section below. In this video, we walked through the best technical path to pass a CISSP quickly. Remember, a lot of the certifications that we went through, they will all build on what you've learned in each one you'll progressively get more knowledgeable about cybersecurity. Take advantage of that fact. Study smarter, not necessarily harder. It's not a coincidence that I put in certifications that build on top of each other to prepare you for that CISSP exam. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my website at johngood.com for more training without distracting interruptions or advertisements, and I'll see you next time.